The World Class Community Show is designed to bring you the latest talks on community building. Join our host and his guests ranging from leaders at global enterprises to niche underground community builders. In these episodes, they discuss the creation, the importance, the future, and much more about community building. If you're ready to learn the depths of attracting and engaging crowds around your brand, then make sure to tune in. Welcome, everybody, to the World Class Community Show, where we invite expert community builders to share their experiences, knowledge, and expertise they've built up through the years. And today we have a great guest. Graham Duplessis is head of brand and community at Factory Berlin. It's the biggest collaborative ecosystem of startups and scale ups in the world. And Graham leads the uh, marketing and community team and develops the factory's brand strategy to grow their community and overall performance. Being a social media and marketing expert for most of his career and now growing one of the most diverse and unique community cultures, we want to welcome Graham here today. Welcome, Graham. Hi, thanks for having me. That was a really nice intro. Um, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's my story. But yeah, it's great to be here and to join the um, amazing community builders and people that you're talking to. I'm really looking forward to, to kind of hearing the other conversations you've been having. Okay, awesome. One of the first uh, icebreakers we always ask is, what community, except of the factory, of course, are you a part of that is very unique? Um, well, I'm an openly gay man, so I'm part of the, the queer community, the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and I would say that while it's quite broad and diverse, it's very unique. And I'm, I'm really um, proud and happy to have been part of that community my whole life um but every day and every week i become more and more um kind of integrated to it meeting more amazing people there and it's it's also um really amazing to see how i can yeah continue to be part of that not just at, by my identity but also like give to it and um and have this like really amazing um environment to to share my story and to support and empower others um, yeah, I'm really, really proud to be um, a queer person and to be part of that community. It's, um, I'm very fortunate and I absolutely love it, especially in Berlin. Okay. I love it in Berlin as well. It's such a cool <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, all, it's, it's a great city where people can really express themselves. And I think uh, yeah. my experience with Berlin has, has been awesome. So uh, maybe a, a quick a uh, question like, uh, Graham, you are a community manager at the factory. How does that job look like? What are your responsibilities? Um, well, no day is ever the same and no day is ever dull. Um, I mean, so, so my, my role as head of brand and community, um, I basically work with an amazing team of people um, to have an overview of the experience of our community from the first moment they become aware of who we are all the way through to them becoming our biggest brand ambassadors and becoming community advocates um so i work with my with my um, my team in the brand um area to really tell stories to um, amplify the work of our amazing community and of our members give them a platform and also bring new people into that so via the digital channels um via our kind of our classic brand channels um bringing more people involved into our mission and our vision and what we do um and then in, on the community side um it's very very broad i think the nature of our business is there's a lot of kind of operational side of things so working to onboard our members support them in getting the most out of the network um kind of enjoying the most of our product um and also a big big part of that is building programs events and activations um and also partnerships that can really enrich the experience of the members in our community. Um, but there's a, a lot more inside that. So whether it's running around on an event, moving chairs, whether it's kind of talking to members, having a coffee with them, um, I don't know, doing research and working out what kind of um, ways of building community are, uh, are, are coming up, um, what kind of other communities are doing, how can we build bridges between those. There is a huge, huge world of community management and community building. And I think that's what makes it such an inspiring place to be working, um, not just in factory, but also in the, the broader industry. Okay, great. And one of the, the, the vision or the mission of the factory is Factory Berlin's diverse community of members and partners collaborate to build the world of tomorrow. 
what does this mean for you and what does this mean for the for the community yeah so um our our mission really is to give every creator an empowering network and of course um there's lots of different ways in, in which we do that um but i guess broadly we really believe that everyone is a creator um so not just someone who necessarily is a creative in the traditional sense but also anyone who's building making something kind of producing output and that frames a lot of what we do um, at Factory because we want to bring people together in this mindset so that they can learn from each other, so that they can kind of co-create, so they can collaborate. Uh, what we really think is quite beautiful about community in general, but also networks and global networks of communities, is that when you bring people together from slightly different perspectives or sometimes from very different perspectives, you can spark new ways of thinking, new ways of looking at problems that you maybe hadn't previously thought of. So that's kind of a big part of what this is, is um, what our mission at Factory is to do, is bring people from these diverse perspectives together, as you said. Um, uh, what we've also try, uh, found, and I think as we've evolved as a network and a community, is um, kind of tapping into the local Berlin community or the community maybe outside of, of our core membership base um, to understand where the needs are and, and what people are really looking for. So about three years ago now, it feels like yesterday, um, we kind of brought more creatives into the community because what we saw was in Berlin especially, there's this amazing tech startup scene, which is just really inspiring to be a part of. And there's also this incredible creative community of artists, musicians. I mean, it's, it's, it's so uh, like mind-blowing when you, ever you meet someone, they're doing another really amazing project. But what we felt was there was a little bit of a, um, a kind of a lack of dialogue between these two communities. So we tried to create ways that we could build bridges between those. So also this is why a lot of this creator messaging in our, in our mission and our vision, is also about building bridges between um, the creative community and the tech startup community at Factory. We realized that by bringing all these artists in and creatives, not only were we um, creating a more diverse scene, more queer people, more women, more people of color. Um, but we also were kind of sparking new ideas. And actually, the reality is we as humans aren't um, kind of categorizable in that way. We, it's easy for us to stereotype and say, I'm an artist. But the reality is you might be an artist, but you also might be a coder. You might be a developer. You might be an entrepreneur. You might be a sports person. So we wanted to create a community where you could be all of those things um, and you could really grow those skills and you could use them and you could work with other people who kind of had the same approach. Um, our programming is basically all coming down to, to, um, to, this, to, this, um, to this vision. So there are a few pillars of what we do. Um, we, have, we have our programs, so we do mentorship, we do um, cohort-based learning, we have a, an amazing events program where we bring experts from around the world to our stage. All of that creating a, a, really, in, in, a really enriching space to, to learn, to upskill, to, to also offer your, um, your expertise to other members. Um, we have our three buildings, so we've got two in Berlin and one in Hamburg now, Factory Hammer Brooklyn. They're beautiful. They're amazing. If you've not come to visit us, do. Um, they're really, really special places that can kind of inspire you, as well as just finding a space to work. There's also meeting rooms. We have event spaces. We bring a lot of events into our buildings. There's a cafe. You can sit and have a coffee. And this really is a place for you to have those serendipitous connections with people who you might be sat next to you never normally might meet. Um, and that's kind of like our, our buildings are like the, the home of, of, of our network. Um, and then, of course, we actually have the network. So the people, that's really the most important thing. And it's the core of everything. So um, to become part of Factory Berlin, you have to apply to become a member. And what we do is we curate people to make sure that there's really from the beginning this understanding that we have um, a need for value exchange two ways. So in your application form, we ask people to explain what they want to bring to the community is what they feel they can benefit from it. So that means that there's this instantly this, this space where people are ready to, to kind of be giving and taking and, and, and having a very collaborative environment. What inspired you to add these questions? Was it, did you all, always had these questions or was it like, okay, we are getting members who are not that active in the community. We need to push this feeling through the uh, recruitment. 
Um, well, the, the thing is, I mean, curation is a really interesting topic because mm. there's it's quite a hard line to to, um, to walk because sometimes it can also feel a little bit elitist. And we really never really wanted to be like that. And at least in my time here, the curation is really about um, trying to also communicate to people what, what the expectations of the existing community are. Um, when we scale community, when you become bigger, when more and more people become involved, it can be harder to really kind of make sure that there is this one to one, that there's this back and forth, that it's really as actually fertile as we say it is and that we want it to be. So through application, what we can do is, first of all, we can understand who's in the community. Um, and that's really important that we make sure we have a, a balance of people from different backgrounds, that we can kind of leverage this interdisciplinary mindset that we talk about. Um, but also, yeah, at, at the starting point, making, making it clear to people that this is a community. It's a network of back and forth interaction. And that's really the, the most valuable thing. Um, there was a big shift in our business model quite some time before I actually started. We previously were much more focused on, on, a, on a co-working space for tech and startups. And that was really, really interesting for us because it was almost like this experiment to understand like what is the value at Factory. As we shifted into a community model where we wanted to bring people together and it was less about the space, of course, that was an important part of it, but it wasn't just a desk you book. It's actually a network of humans that you can meet. Um, we realized that there was this then um, a bit more of a need for, for a curation and application process to make sure that it really stayed like this family feeling, you know, that it felt like everyone was there for each other. Um, and that's kind of like how it evolved. And we're always iterating. So the big thing, I guess, in the last couple of years was bringing more creatives in. Um, so that, of course, is reflected in the, in the application process. Of course, we also realize there's a huge problem when it comes to diversity in the startup tech scene and business in general. So that's also something that we more explicitly discuss in the application process to understand how can we reach gender parity? How can we encourage more women in entrepreneurship? How can we more, bring more people of color, more people from the queer community into our spaces? People who tradi traditionally or conventionally haven't been included in those conversations. The application form allows us to make sure that we're creating a more balanced space and that we're giving those people an opportunity to become part of the conversation. Okay, I hear that diversity is, is one of the key pillars in your community. And um, the last numbers I could find online was around 4,500 members currently, including 150 startups and over 70 nationalities. Are these correct? Uh, yeah, it's actually 5,000 members now. So we, we have actually oh, grown. Wow. Congratulations. Last, it's, I guess since those numbers. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's, a, it's an interesting thing as well, because for us, it's, it's really great to be able to broaden the... Um, the reach of our community um, and to bring more people in. Of course, that's really, really great, but it's not like the core focus of us. We want to scale the network so that we can add value to it. And if we're just growing and growing and drip growing, but people aren't really getting what they need from it, then of course that's not sustainable. Um, so it's been really, really good to be able to kind of maintain that balance and still grow. Um, and I also think a really um, interesting thing is that throughout the pandemic where our spaces and our events were greatly uh, hindered, we're slowly getting back into those things now, thank goodness, because it's a really, really big part of, of membership. Um, but we managed to maintain a certain level of um, the size of our community. Of course, some people did leave because things changed for them. But in general, we've not we're not seeing that huge kind of um, loss of members that we that sometimes you might see. And that really showed us that that people were there for each other and they also wanted to keep factory going. They wanted to kind of put some of themselves into it when times were tough. So um, that's been a really, really good learning for us and something that we're excited to continue building on as we get back to some sort of new normal or um, some sort of kind of community building that that we were also enjoying before the pandemic. Um, and then, yeah, of course, the diversity in terms of nationalities, um, loads and loads of startups. I mean, that really is the core of our heart, our lifeblood. It's where we came from. It's one of the biggest things that we're known for in, in Berlin is those amazing startups, especially earlier stage startups, but also some um, later stage, more growth stage businesses. Um, and this is also something that I think will always be part of our DNA. So um, I think we're always welcoming more people in as we open more buildings, as we offer more programming and, and uh, content for these people as well, for these kind of um, user profiles. We, we, we're lo looking forward to seeing how, how that grows um, moving forward. Okay, so it's a really growing community. You've, you've seen it expand really fast over multiple locations. 
What are some mm -hmm. of the biggest challenges you noticed regarding the community becoming a lot bigger? What's the difference between a 1,000 people community and a 5,000 people community? Um, that's a really good question, actually. And it's quite interesting to think because I've been at the company for four years now. And when I joined, we just just opened the, the Gerlitzer Park campus, which I'm currently in now. Mm. And so we were around 1,500 members. And we really have grown a lot in, that, in the last moment, uh, in the last uh, year since I've been here. The thing, I guess, that's, that's been a challenge and always would be a challenge, we talk about it also with members, is in the early days of Factory, when it was small, it really was this, like, family vibe. Everyone knew each other. So it was quite easy to feel like you could find someone to support you or you knew everyone knew someone who could help you. And there was this very natural network effect that we were seeing happening. <clears throat> and the community feeling was incredibly authentic. As we grew, we realized that we had to kind of shift our offering to facilitate that same feeling despite it not happening necessarily organically. So a lot of the programs build on kind of organic shifts and things that we saw happening anyway. Um, but we have to always iterate to make sure that they're super relevant and super useful as we grow. Um, good examples of that are like our circles program. So circles are sub communities inside the factory building community um, around a shared topic or area of interest. And what we see there is when we have a big community of 5,000 people, it's great because you can meet with people from different disciplines and that interdisciplinarity thing again comes in there. But also people like to find people with very similar shared experiences. So the Circles program works to bring those people together inside the community. So you still have like your little group of designers or blockchain experts or whatever it might be. And it's not just industries, it's areas of interest. Um, and yeah, so, so those are also circle led, um, sorry, those are member led. So what happened was we were seeing organically people, designers were getting to know each other and then they would have their weekly lunch as designers. So then we said, okay, let's actually empower and support that type of community building um, more. So then this program evolved and as well as kind of just having the name there and, and running that, we also give them support for events every, every couple of months. Um, we kind of give them resources and, and, and facilities to help them with whatever they want to offer their community. And of course, it depends on what your what your sub community is doing to what resources you might need. Um, some of them have like databases of freelancers, of designers that they can share with other people. Some people have um, like a, a weekly check in call where they discuss the latest um, trends or things in sustainability. For example, they have workshops with partners is a really, really good example of how you can ma manage to keep that community feeling what, even though you're really scaling um, and, and bringing a much bigger um, pool of people together. Yeah, that's a great answer for a difficult question. But uh, I'm, gl I'm glad uh, you can share your experience on this. Um, mm -hmm. A bit more practical, do you have a specific onboarding program in place for new members? Um, yes, uh, this is something that's, that has changed a lot over time and, and will continue to do so because, of course, the, the face of the community is changing. Um, so in the pandemic, we took all of our onboardings virtual um, through having Zoom calls, which is actually really, really great to get to know new people um, and meet them via Zoom because you weren't really meeting new people in the middle of the pandemic. You were just seeing the people that you knew every day. So it was this really exciting thing. And I was joining a couple of those. and It was great to see people and, and, and bring them together. Um, nowadays, our onboarding process has a few kind of pillars to it. So there's the very operational administrative side, which, of course, you we have to do. We have to get people on the digital platforms that we offer. We have to let them know, like, where is the building? How do they get there? Um, yeah, all the kind of like very nitty gritty operational bits. We try and do that digitally, but then we also have an element of that in person. Um, we have a, a meet and greet, which members can come to. And that is like a sort of a little bit of administration, but it's much more about bringing the new members together. So what we see happening is in those groups, people get to know the people who've just joined with them and it becomes a bit like a, um, I don't know, like a school year group or something. And then you mm. go through your factory experience together um, and I very often see people who I onboarded with around the building. And it's, it's like really nice feeling that you feel like, oh, OK, they started with me. Um, so we also really facilitate that as well as just in the meet and greet session. We then create groups so that they can also check back in with each other. 
And that's a really valuable starting point to then build your network and build your community in your space at Factory. Um, we then also try and bring people into some of our community rituals at a really early stage. So one of the big, big things about building community is having those ongoing things, activations or processes that you can kind of like attach something to. So our rituals exist much more in, in, in terms of, uh, of events. So we have every two weeks we have a breakfast, every other week we have happy hour and we have a monthly drinks event. Um, and then every month we have like um, a big, at least every month we have a big um, kind of content led event format. But specifically things like breakfasts and drinks, they're a really good entry point into the community because people know, okay, then there'll be another one in two weeks time and I'll see you at the next one. And it really is, Having that ongoing ritual, it makes you feel part of something bigger. So we try and make sure that after your meet and greet, you're also very much welcomed into one of our community rituals. I keep saying rituals and it sounds a bit culty, but <laughs> it is a very like common thing in community building. For those who don't believe me, it is something you can read about. It. It's a really interesting pillar of, of how to bring people together and, 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 and bring, um, yeah, bring them around kind of shared purpose and shared interest. Um, so that's a really, really big thing. It's also the parts that we love the most because that's when you really get to know people and everyone lets their guard down and it's a really kind of friendly, fun environment. Um, and then we also have the one of the kind of, I guess, moments that is sometimes under-celebrated but is a big thing um, to become part of Factory Building. You get a member card and that's also this really nice little token of, of belonging somehow. So. Yes, it has an operational purpose. You check into the campuses with it <laughs> so that you can access the building. But it's also got our brand on it. It sits in your wallet. Hopefully it sits in your wallet or you keep it somewhere safe. So it's also this kind of like token of, of, of belonging. And together, that is like the initial um, process of becoming part of the community. But it's something that we also want to shift our mindset towards. And we're working on this is how does your onboarding process basically continue? Because you can't just have a one month onboarding. You need a six month or one year onboarding so also continually finding ways to make sure that the onboarding is an ongoing thing and that it's not just something that happens it's wrapped and it's done and then off you are and we want to kind of keep um, um, integrating people on an ongoing basis because there is so much going on here and it's so great to get involved but sometimes it also be, can be hard so we want to help people at every stage of their journey of being part of Factory Berlin um, so it's something that's always we're working on, we're iterating, we're listening to members as well to understand what they like and what they need. Um, but that's kind of an overview of, of how we operate our onboardings and welcoming people into the community at the moment. Okay. And is a community member always linked to a building or to the physical location? Or is there already a virtual type of community they can also be a member of? Um, so part of giving every create every creator an empowering network, the network is the core product, and that of course is a decentralized community. Um, so that's what everyone kind of uh, becomes part of when they become a member of Factory Berlin. So we do have a certain level also of presence. I mean, it makes sense that if you live in Berlin and you become part of a factory network, then you want to be on on a Berlin campus. Yes, um, but because the the nature of our community is much more. Um, transcends the, the, the buildings themselves, um, we think much more in a decentralized fashion. Of course, our programming is a big part of that. Like we host identical, similar programs wherever they are. We, in the pandemic, we took a lot of our content virtual online so people can consume it like that. Um, and of course we have um, platforms that um, support that decentralized networking. So we really use, we've got two platforms, our member area, which is where every member has a profile and they can find other members. They can build their own kind of, uh, yeah, outline of who they are in their profile, um, their employment history, like what they're working on now, what companies they've built, et cetera, et cetera. And they can also access things like our event calendar through there. They can bring their guests into the building. That's kind of like one of our digital homes. And then we also have Slack, um, which is our like behemoth of digital <laughs> ongoings. Um, it's actually amazing. And it's one of these places where you feel like, oh, I can put a question out and you'll get replies. You get people DMing you. And it feels really bizarre at first because we're used to, I think, a very one-sided social media interaction in a lot of places. And this then becomes like the opposite of that. Um, so we've built like a structure there that really fulfills all the needs you might have from community, from things like you can ask an expert in a certain field. We curate a set of experts 
um, into this channel and then you can just post your message, ask your questions, have a one on one or back and forth with them. We have general chats. We have Ask Factory staff where you can learn about your membership. But we also have interest groups. We also have um, I'm trying to think. I'm part of a tennis a tennis group on Slack now. Of people trying to find a tennis partner. We have flea market. We have apartment hunting, um, and so yeah, there's that like big interest area. Um, and the one of the biggest things is also circles take each. They each have a channel, and that's kind of like really their home when it comes to building um, decentralized content. So that's managed by the captains. Um, I think the sustainability circle actually have like a weekly call in Slack there. Um, they're very active and anyone can also access these as well. So it becomes this like digital, um, yeah, home tree. It's like lots of different kind of routes that you can go and discover um, as to how to get the most out of being part of Factory Berlin without even walking on site. And often I meet people who say, I haven't been to the building for like six months and they're still part of the, the digital community there on Slack. They're using the member platform and stuff. So it's a really, really important part of us, of, of what we do when it comes to, to looking at that decentralized network and community. Wow, that's that's great. I was going to ask you the question, what tools do you use? But Slack and the member platform are the, the two biggest tools, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, we're using so a lot of how Zoom because you, oh, to like sorry. live streaming. Oh. Sorry, in the pandemic, we're using a lot of Zoom and things like this. We do try and live stream events and things like that. But um, yeah, Slack and, and our own member area are really the the jewels in that crown when it comes to the, the tools we're using. Okay. What experience or interaction with some of the members do you remember like, we are really making an impact? Do, do you know a story where a member came to you, said something that, you, that made you think like, whoa? Um. Yeah, there's quite a few. Actually, what's really interesting is sometimes people who aren't necessarily members also coming and feeling the impact. That's really, really amazing. So um, I'm going to give two anecdotes here, if that's OK. I know you asked for one, but I'll give two. Um, yeah. I went to um, Slush um, in Helsinki. Amazing, amazing place. Mm -hmm. Also a really great startup community there. And the content's amazing. It's like a, a nightclub. It's brilliant. Absolutely loved it. And I met someone there who was, I introduced myself, I can't remember what it was, and they mentioned, oh, yeah, the stealth mode program is from Factory Berlin. This person, I don't know where they were from, I think it was somewhere, um, maybe Sweden, not German, not based in Berlin, and they knew this program that we ran, and I thought, wow, that is really how we're changing, not just the community for our members, but we're changing something outside of it. So... Stealth Mode is um, a three-month mentorship program for women, non-binary, and underrepresented founders. Um, and basically, it's yeah, focused around matching um, kind of MVP stage founders with mentors that can help them get to a stage where they can start pitching for early investment. And as okay. well as the mentorship, there's this kind of curated alumni network. We bring lots of experts, investors into this network where they can work with each other. It's kind of a sub-community in our community and we also offer content and programming that can support these founders building businesses at the very early stage so it's great to go to a space where there's like loads of tech experts and they're seeing what we're doing especially something that has a much bigger vision we want to really make sure that we're empowering all creators to build businesses and we want to change those shocking numbers when it comes to gender specifically gender diversity but in general diversity in the startup founding scene um, and so it makes such a it's such a good feeling to see like the ripples of what we're actually doing on that program for those founders it goes far, far beyond to. Yeah. When I was in Helsinki um, and then the other ones a bit closer to home. So um, I was speaking to a member, a great member. I'm going to give a shout out Alina, Alina Bassi. Um, she's a, a, a startup founder. She's also one of the founders of Founderland, which is a network for women of color founders doing amazing, amazing things. And I was having a chat to her, um, I guess last summer or the summer before. And we were talking about Factory in the community. And she'd said that like Factory, when she first joined, was a real place for her to find that network of people that she needed to build her business. And now she's the one that's building those networks and saying that basically any expat that she talks to, anyone, any migrant from outside of Berlin that's moving to the city, specifically in the tech or startup scene, knows factory wants to be part of factory already is factory 
at a re- already is part of factory um is a really a really inspiring thing and it, it, it's it's kind of mind-boggling sometimes when i talk to people and realize actually how big what we do is because it still feels like home it feels like family for me and i think for a lot of our members it does feel like that so then when you realize how wide reaching it is in the city um it it, it can be quite quite bizarre but brilliant um, and i think that's a really good um testimonial for how we can keep going if people find their home here um and yeah wow that's two amazing anecdotes that really show the impact of what you're doing at the factory and i must say our experience because our berlin office is also in the factory mm-hmm. uh, is exactly the same the times i visited it was a very nice atmosphere a lot of energy a lot of people it was during covid season so mm-hmm. not that many events going on but you could see that still people were there and still people wanted to interact mm-hmm. with each other so i really loved my experiences there so right. um cool. last question uh for the episode is if there's one thing people must certainly remember from our conversation because we talked about a lot of things what would you like to give the world of last nugget of advice regarding community building this is i think this is the hardest question because there's so many (laughs) things that i would advise and things that you can only sometimes realize from doing it so like you just have to make those mistakes or you have to go through it yourself um But what I really think is quite important, and I actually had a conversation with a member last week about this, is um, staying true to your values. Um, Community building can be really hard sometimes. And when you are building for a group of people that is so diverse, it can sometimes be hard to work out, right, well, how do I take this in a direction that's going to be the most rewarding or fulfilling? Um, And I think if you establish who you are as a community, what you want to do and really define clear values about what you believe and and, and your place in the world um, and make sure that you really kind of pin your decision making to that, um, kind of the rest starts to fall into place. It's a lot easier said than done, um, but it's really, really worth it if you always try and like question, okay, is this the right way to go? What do we believe? Who are we? What are our values? And really align those. Um, I think that's important in actually brand building, yes, in in business in general. Um, But I would say it's way, way, way more important and a whole new level when it comes to community building because people get so passionate about it. They really see themselves in it. They want to identify. You want them to feel like they belong to what you're doing. Um, And it's so human and, and like emotional. So it's really, really important to keep those values true, communicate them clearly. And I think that's something that we're really working on at Factory. We're always iterating. We're always trying to make sure that those values um, are aligned with our, what we actually are doing. And I think we've done loads of really great work, but it's never, it's never over. And there's always ways to improve. And I think, yeah, my advice would always be clearly define your values and stick to those. Um, and the rest, rest will all kind of fall into place, hopefully. That's great advice. And we finished the episode with our critical thinker. And this is a question we ask every guest. This is, if you were hired by a startup or a brand that nobody knows, what would you do to create a community from scratch in less than 30 days? What would you, your go plan B or your action plan B? <clears throat> less than 30 days. That seems like an impossible challenge to, <laughs> to ask me. I would turn around and say, no, thanks. No, I, no, I wouldn't. I would definitely take the challenge on. Um, I think as a starting point, and this is also part of why I love being part of Factory Berlin so much, um, is start building your community from the inside. So find the community builders, the community managers, the, the advocates to join your team to help you build that because it's not possible to do it alone. And community really is built from the inside. The lifeblood of your community is the other community managers and the people who are, are building that. Um, and I think that from there, they also bring in their communities. Everyone has their own network. And if you bring in the right people from an early stage and get them really passionate and inspired about what you're doing, um, that's a really, really good starting point. And then from there, um, I would go back to my rituals. Um, so I would really say, like, establish those things, those the, the pillars of, of, of how you operate as a community to make sure that people always have something tangible to connect to. Because sometimes it can be quite hard if you talk about a community and it's just a group of people, but there's nothing really for them to kind of 
come together around. So I would establish some rituals early on. And they don't have to be big. It doesn't have to be like a 500 person event. It can be little things like a weekly email or a phone call or whatever it might be, or something on your social media channels. But create, create those rituals, those repetitions. Um, and yeah, make sure that your core team are, are the ambassadors of your network from the early stage. And then you won't be done in 30 days, but you'll have a strong foundation on which to build. And really remember that it is not actually possible to do it in such a short period of time. So give yourself the time and the space to to build, have a really important conversation with your community, because, of course, you can't also just build it and expect everyone to get on board. You have to be reactive. You have to be reflective. Um, and, yeah, take the time past your 30 days to continue maybe shifting, changing um, and letting it be that like organic breathing um, organism that it is. And then you're going to have a really strong, strong um, community around your brand or around your business. That's a great, great answer, Graham. I really like the, the idea yeah. of the rituals. I really like that building the foundation of a community. It's not only the people getting together, but it's also, let's say, the framework of how they will interact mm -hmm. or how they can interact mm -hmm. that make it durable. Mm -hmm. So it will last, yeah. uh, last uh, a lifetime, hopefully. What would what would your what would your advice be if you had to build community in, from scratch in less than thirty days? Well, my advice is uh, bundled from all the previous guests already. And <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, the the things I heard most was basically um, don't do it top down, but from the inside. Mm -hmm. Also, which which you said, yeah. so from the people themselves, uh, facilitate versus uh, give directions. So give them the yeah. tools, give them the ways, help them, challenge them. Um, I really like the rituals one because it's the first time somebody uh, mentioned this. I think it's a really good idea. And mm -hmm. one of the things I would just do is have a lot of uh, non-scalable actions. So basically just mm -hmm. have conversations with people. And that yeah. first and second and third member just... Because the, the community itself doesn't have a lot of value in the beginning because it may be just three or four people. But mm -hmm. the value is the really close interactions. So invest the crucial Absolutely. time in these first people and then the snowball will will continue to roll. And um, I think that would be my, my mm -hmm. go-to plan is just a lot of personal mm -hmm. attention, personal conversations and make sure that mm -hmm. the people, every time somebody joins, they stay. Like, Open mm -hmm. the front door, but close the back door and make sure that everybody that joins feels happy and stays. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can be hard. Those non-scalable actions can sometimes be hard to focus on as you get bigger. So that's actually a really good piece of advice, something that I'd not thought of so explicitly. So that's a really good, good one. And uh, the, this um, startup, this CBD startup, they, I'm not sure if you know, but they're big in, in, in Germany and Berlin. I got a postcard from them the other day and it was like a handwritten postcard. And I thought, yeah. wow, that is wow. a very good example very good of how you can like build advocates. Because I, I received, I felt so special. I felt so, part of it, but it was it was like a discount code or something. But it was such a smart little kind of activity. And yeah, it's a bit brandy and marketingy, but actually, it's also community building. And I think that that's a really good. I just thought of that example as you gave that um, suggestion. So maybe we should also keep doing that at Factory. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes it's just these small personal things that. You can never pour it into systems, but yeah. the impact is just enormous. And um, okay. yeah, that, that's some of the things I would do, certainly in the beginning. Of course, when you are at 5,000 people, you have to look at it completely different. But in the beginning, I think uh, if you can engage five to 10 people, you are already mm -hmm. on a very good path. Awesome. Okay. I'm looking so, forward to hearing what yeah. everyone else said. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. I really enjoyed it. You, uh, you, you're clearly a really big expert in, in community building, certainly at, at a serious scale. Um, so again, thank you so much for your insights. And I'm looking forward when I'm in, in the Berlin to meet up and uh, continue this conversation yeah. in person. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really lovely to chat and to share our story. And I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone else had to say. Um, and yeah, let me know when you're in town and let's catch a coffee in factory. Perfect. See you soon, Graham. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Bye. 
Thank you so much for listening to the World Class Community Show. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel on your preferred podcast platform. Looking forward to inspire you again on the next show.